was a very empowering character for me in that sense. More than um, how I dress up, it's it's about how I feel on the inside. My knowing that I was attracted to somebody that brought out my playfulness. So when I would approach them, I would genuinely strike up a conversation with them. But when you smile at somebody, they automatically smile. And if they don't, then you're in trouble. <laughs> Hi, this is Tanya Manikdala, and today we are shooting for iDiva's Heart of Seduction cover. It's nice. I mean, I, I think I've also um, looked at characters that way. You know, she's the typical girl next door, and all of those things. But that being said, I do want to break that uh, stereotype. I do want to break the way people view me, and so that is what this day has been all about today. I, I think that was on the shoot of Toothsbury. Uh, because before that, um, I was obviously the girl next door, you know, the cute vibe and everything. But Toothpuri with Rumi is when I really embraced my sensuality, my sexuality and, you know, just also my femininity with it. So I, I think Rumi was a very empowering character for me in that sense. Uh, empowered, confident and comfortable. I think the girl next door is how you, how people view me and that is very inherent to who I am and to my personality. Um, how do I balance it with my sensuality? I, I think there are phases and, and I think my sensuality is also an inherent part of me. It, it's not like it's a removed entity which I have to get back somehow. So it's just a part of everything that I do and I, I think more than um, how I dress up, it's, it's about how I feel on the inside. So it's about, um, it's really about how I'm feeling and how I want people to perceive me. Embracing all of me, um, be it um, what I consider a flaw, be it my belly fat, be it my freckles, for example. I, I remember growing up, freckles wasn't a concept known to um, the Indian skin tone uh, per se. And people would just look at me and be like, what is that? And I know a lot of people ask me to get them removed. But that is, I think from very young, when I was like really young on, um, I started embracing who I was because I, I felt like this is a part of me. And if I remove this, I'm, I'm trying to mold myself into how people would want to see me and how it's more... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm more pleasant to their eyes. So instead of taking that into consideration, I, I started... Uh, playing into who I want it to be. I, I think it makes me feel confident when I can look into the other person's eyes, maintain eye contact and give them that smile. Where Because I think nowadays I don't see, like people are staring, but they're not trying, they're avoiding eye contact. They'll stare you, they'll stare at you. But when the other person looks at them, they'll, they'll wander away, the eyes rove away. So I think uh, if you look at them and just that smile of acknowledgement, like I see you, I think that really helps me. <laughs> uh, my first crush, I think that was when, that was way back, uh, when I was in school, fourth or fifth standard, didn't even know what the meaning of crush was, just this person that I like. Somehow I'm attracted to infatuation, as we used to call it back then. Um, and uh, I, I think my knowing that I was attracted to somebody, that brought out my playfulness. So yeah, that is what having a crush does to me. When you smile, I think it's so underrated, but when you smile at somebody, they automatically smile. And if they don't, then you're in trouble. <laughs> It's the body language that can do everything, and also your voice. I don't, I don't think that uh, we we really undermine what good voice can do, but just changing the the base of your voice can really like change the. Hi, I'm Tanya. Say hi, I'm Tanya. See, it's it's all about the breathing. I've shown up outside the house. I'm not going to. I, I was I was a kid, but I have shown up outside the house and um, making up really stupid excuses. But uh, yeah, that was what I've done. <laughs> I, would, I would smile at them, I think, um, and I would approach them. I would genuinely strike up a conversation with them where I would want to know about the other person. And uh, yeah, we see where things go from there. I think when I'm okay with uh, my hair undone, no makeup on, 
and I still feel like you know I'm taking care of my soul. I think that sounds very philosophical, but yeah. <laughs> If I start viewing myself as that is when I think things have gone wrong but others are entitled to their own opinions and all of those things so I I don't I can't really control those things so I'm I never have anything to say about other people's opinions I I would always like to believe that I am doing what is right by me and I think that is that is all I would ever care about Meditation really helps me and also not caring a lot about what people have to say empowering embracing and enigmatic it's been a lot of fun like i haven't seen myself like this even i, I mean i to, i i think i found my new aesthetic this is how i want to be all the time <laughs> but no um it has been a uh, uncharted territory even for me so it's it's been a lot of fun it's been empowering for me as well to see myself this way and to and to kind of explore the things that i haven't done before so it's been a great experience today thank you idiva love yourself i know it sounds superbly overrated um but it's the most underrated thing that you could do to yourself that love yourself accept yourself for who you are do not try to fit into the mold because that's not right by you you are your own unique self and i i think that's the most um, seductive thing a woman can do just embracing who she is and really showing up for herself